Well, all right, everyone, it's 631, so I believe it's uh, good to get started. Um, welcome. I appreciate everybody's time here. We uh, had a, a kind of a rough couple of days, challenging weather, particularly in the town of Amherst. So I appreciate everyone, everyone's uh, ability to get here tonight at tonight's session. From the bookshelves to the public, GIS apps by the Amherst Heritage Commission. Um, I'd like to introduce our panelists. I'll begin with a self-intro. I'm uh, Sarah Siskavich, GIS Manager at Nashua Regional Planning Commission, and I've been an Amherst resident for 14 years, 10 of which I was also employed, have been employed at NRPC doing GIS and mapping. And tonight I will be the technical webinar host hopefully successfully, and I will be moderating uh, the question and answer um, function of the webinar. I'm joined by Will Lute, an Amherst resident and longtime chair of the Amherst New Hampshire Heritage Commission. Uh, the commission is dedicated to serving as a facilitator in discovering the town's rich and sometimes hidden history and heritage. Will's the principal investigator and grant manager for this project and that really enabled the success of it. And we know, Will knows a lot about Amherst and uh, can help me out when it comes to answering questions that are, are not of a technical nature. Lastly, I'd like to introduce our main uh, presenter, Tyrell Borowitz, GIS analyst at the Nashua Regional Planning Commission. Tyrell has been with NRPC for just over a year after finishing up his master's in GIS at the University of Arizona. Under the guidance of the Amherst Heritage Commission, Tyrell was the primary author and cartographer of the three applications being demonstrated tonight. So some housekeeping before we get going. This webinar is being recorded and will be available online after tonight. So if you would like to refer back or send it to others, feel free to do that. I'll also mention that closed captioning is enabled during this webinar, so you're welcome to turn on captions if you'd like. This is a webinar, excuse me, webinar style session, meaning that attendee microphones and video will remain off for the duration of the webinar. However, we do want you to participate, and there are three ways to do so. Following my opening remarks, we are going to invite you to participate in a short three question poll. Uh, so that everyone has kind of a feel for who else here is in the room. The chat function is disabled. However, we are running the question and answer, so-called Q&A function, and we invite you to use that function throughout the webinar. I'll be monitoring the Q&A and answering questions, um, and if I, if I can, so I'll be answering questions in written format, or I'll be um, alternatively deferring the question to the end um, where I'll invite a panelist to answer it live. I wanna point out that each of these applications we are showcasing is um, actually publicly accessible online right now. And so you're welcome to visit them even during the presentation and follow along at home if you feel, feel comfortable with that. Um, on that note, to get to um, the applications that we're demonstrating tonight, the quickest path to get there is to, in fact, visit the Amherst Heritage Commission's newly launched website, amherstheritage.com. You'll see this banner here, this cover photo, and some choices uh, to click on both below the banner. Excuse me. Second from the left in the red circle is um, inviting, inviting you to click on GIS Maps, and you'll be brought to a page with each application. And Tyrell will demonstrate this for you in a moment. Before we go further, uh, we'd like to really just acknowledge the project supporters. Um, first and foremost, this grant was funded by the New Hampshire Certified Local Government Grant Program, which is administered by the New Hampshire Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. And we need to thank our many project supporters. Um, as people in Amherst like to say, it takes a village. Um, I'd like to take a moment to thank our project supporters, including staff from the New Hampshire uh, Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, 
the resident volunteers and subject matter experts that contributed their know-how, uh, town staff, and members of both the Amherst Conservation Commission and of course the Amherst Heritage Commission um, who donated many in-kind hours of volunteer work and continue to do so um, to see to the success of this project. Will, yeah. would you like to say? Yeah. Yes. Sarah, this is Will speaking. Hey, I just wanna give a, a quick shout out to the ladies of DHR, Brandy and uh, Amy, and their support for this uh, program through the CLG uh, grant process. They've been on board for the last year and a half. I've given them updates as we as we need to, and, and uh, they've been real good supporters of Amherst in the past, and uh, I hope they'll uh, still be uh, supporters in the future. But thanks a lot, Brandy and Amy. I, I really appreciate it. Great. Here, here. So um, to switch gears a little bit, what I'd like to do is uh, launch the poll. Um, the um, poll is anonymous and it consists of three questions. Um, let me just uh, get to my controls here. My uh, closed captioning is obscuring my Zoom control. So one moment, please, while I... Launch the poll here. So I'll just read through the questions um, just to give you a sense ahead of time of what, what we're asking. I hope this is uh, comfortable for everyone. You do not have to participate if you choose not to. Um, question number one, how would you describe yourself? Check all that apply. So um, we imagine there'll be a number of Amherst residents in the audience, um, but perhaps you're um, live in a resident from uh, another town. Uh, are you an Amherst board member or perhaps a board member? in a town other than Amherst? Um, or are you um, government or agency staff? Number two, how would you rate your familiarity with online mapping? And here, choose one. So would you rate yourself as a beginner? You mean like Google Maps? <laughs> Intermediate? I even know what GIS stands for. Or advanced? I'm an online mapping ninja. And so what we mean by that is perhaps you, you know, use GIS software or Esri perhaps, or you've, um, you know, been a, a regular customer of popular sites such as New Hampshire Granite's Granite View, um, or even the MapGeo application that hosted here at NRPC. And then number three, what types of geographic features are you most interested in? And you can pick your top three. And so those would be things like stone structures or other stone relics, um, things like monuments and markers and guideposts. Um, maybe you're interested in historic structures, houses, schoolhouses, barns, taverns. Rail and trail is another category. Native American or pre-colonial historic resources. Or maybe you're interested in sort of the unique sites and destinations of Amherst. So, um, I see some of the answers are starting to trickle in. Um, I'll give it a, one more minute to make sure everyone has a chance to chime in and then I'll share the results of the poll. All right, so I'm gonna end the poll and I'm gonna share the results here Then we can look at it together. So, um, We've actually got um, a majority of people who are residing outside of Amherst as opposed to Amherst residents. Um, but um, we've got one Amherst board member here and we've got four government or agency staff people. How would you rate your familiarity with online mapping? Looks like we've got kind of a middle of the pack type of crowd here. Um, people who know what GIS is, potentially appreciate the technology, I would hope, um, and are looking to, to learn more and get more practiced. So that's good to know, thank you. What type of geographic features are you most interested in? Pick your top three. Uh, looks like the, the topic of historic structures, including houses, schoolhouses, barns, taverns is most popular, followed by stone structures, stone walls, cellar holes, 
et cetera. We got six votes for unique sites and destinations, followed by rail and trail, Native American or pre-colonial resources, and lastly, one vote for monuments, markers, and guideposts. So that's great. Thank you very much for letting us know that. Um, it kind of echoes a little bit of what we've heard in initial rounds of um, um, outreach that we've done. I think it also mirrors a lot of the content that's in the town's existing historic and cultural resources inventory, um, which is very heavily, um, you know, focused on um, historic structures in particular. So um, that's that's really good to know. It sounds like we're not missing the mark necessarily. Our area of emphasis is is probably at least in the right direction. So with that, completion of the poll, I'm gonna turn the floor over uh, now to Tyrell, who will step through um, the series of three um, applications um, that we're looking to showcase tonight. Thank you, Sarah. All right, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so. First off, I'd like to say thank you again to everyone who's coming to this and viewing this webinar. It's really exciting to be able to share uh, these products with you, um, especially I can look back and see that this was one of the first projects that I worked on when I started at NRPC and here I am a year later giving a webinar on it. So that's pretty special for me. Uh, all right, so the first thing I wanted to show you is just how to navigate to these apps. So here we are at AmherstHeritage.com, which is the homepage for the Heritage Commission. And as Sarah pointed out on that slide, there's a button on this banner, GIS Maps. When you click that, it takes you to this page. And here are the three products that we have completed for you, um, which I'm going to go through uh, one at a time. The first one I'm going to show you is this middle one here, Amherst Through the Years. And this is what we call a story map. Um, it is uh, a historic town story through narrative, photos, and maps. Um, the content for this app is derived from documents that we received from the Amherst Heritage Commission. And of the three apps, this one is definitely the easiest to navigate and digest for all users, and it's designed to be the most accessible of the three apps. The next one we'll be looking at is this one here, Amherst, New Hampshire Heritage Points of Interest. This app features key locations with photos and important attributes. The content from this also primarily came from documents from the Amherst Heritage Commission with additional landmarks added throughout the development period of this app. Uh, this app is definitely geographic in nature, but it is easy to navigate and understandable for most users, I would imagine. Very straightforward. The third app here is the Amherst Map Explorer. So this is definitely a more comprehensive GIS tool which can be used to explore historic and geographic features of the town. The content from this um, is derived from the Heritage Commission, NRPC's own data, uh, which we collect and house and update, as well as other public sources. Um, this app is definitely a tool for more in-depth exploration of many types of data. Uh, if you're not familiar with apps like this, it may be a lot to take in at first, but I'll do my best to take it slow and explain all the important components one at a time. So with that, let's dive into the first one, the story map. So you'll click this link and it'll take you to this page, which I already have open. Amherst, New Hampshire, through the years, and um, this is really a visual timeline, which includes maps and images, which correspond to a scrolling narrative of the eras of Amherst history. To navigate this app, the easiest way is just to scroll down. I'm just using my scroll wheel and 
there we go. So we had a little timeline here, which spells out some key dates, and then a narrative, which comes from directly from the Heritage Commission. Um, another way to navigate this app is along this banner here. These are all links to the different periods of time in Amherst history. So we just moved from this first era to the second era, but I can skip ahead to this, 1920 to 1960. As you go through this app, there are images and maps in the background, which you can also click and see a full um, image of. And you can do that for the maps as well as the pictures. Here's a little picture of a postcard, an old postcard at Babusik Lake. And yeah, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. It's mostly narrative. Here's a nice map of um, a Amherst and the surrounding areas, areas. And then down at the bottom here, 2000 to present in this section, we have, oh, hold on. We also have links to the other two apps, which we'll be exploring points of interest and the map explorer, as well as we have the map explorer embedded here at the bottom. And of course we have credits here for um, pictures and other people who contributed to this app. So in a nutshell, that is the first of our three apps. And obviously I'm not gonna be reading through all of that, but you can do so at your leisure. So going back to this page, we'll move on to the second, Amherst Heritage Points of Interest. So this is the main opening page for this. And um, first I'm going to explain how to navigate this app. Then I will give a brief description of the different tabs along the top there and the types of information that are in this app. I'll go through how to select points and to view the descriptions and attributes of the data. And then I'll show you how to share this app in a few different ways and also provide feedback. So to start with, navigating the map is very straightforward. If you've used anything like Google Maps, all you have to do is click and drag with your mouse. It will move for you. And then you can zoom in and zoom out. I'm using my scroll wheel, but you can just as easily use the buttons at the top left of the map here. You can zoom out and zoom back in. And um, there's also this home button here, which in case you get lost and you're like, I don't see anything, what's going on? You can click this home button. It'll take you back to the original extent of the map. You'll also notice as I was doing that, um, we have these points around the town. As I'm doing that, the points on the map change and these thumbnails on the left change too. So depending on your extent, you may see more or less features. Um, and so if you're like, oh, I'm really not seeing what I think I should be seeing, it's a good idea to just go back to the beginning if you know what you're looking for. So now I'll describe the different types of data that we have in this app. So the first tab that we're on is place names, and these are significant areas of the town. Then we have historic homes, and to change this, all you have to do is click on the tab that you're interested in. Historic homes represents some of the oldest and most distinctive historic homes in the town. Um, I do want to put out the disclaimer that this does not um, include all of the historic resources inside the um, Amherst Historic Village District. Um, jurisdiction of the Heritage Commission is townwide, so that was kind of the focus of this project. Um, the Historic District Commission oversees the historic preservation of the village itself. So that's why you know, there may or may not be um, some features included which are in the village district. So we have some historic homes here. This next section, distinct outbuildings, this mostly covers barns, silos, apples, storage, cellars, and some other features. The next category is cemeteries. That's pretty self-explanatory. 
And then we have guideposts and markers. So these can be town boundary markers or historic signs or other stone, um, old stone markers pointing the way to different towns. The next category is stone structures. So a little different than the markers. These are actual monuments or building foundations, bridges, and there's even um, uh, some quarry, quarry, old quarry points on here too. And then the last category is sites and destinations. So these are other prominent town landmarks that we thought should be included but didn't really fit into the other categories. So I've shown you that there's all these different points um, that are part of this. What you can do to select these is you can go over here on the left where there are these thumbnails and you'll see that as I move over each thumbnail, it highlights a different point on the map. And you'll also notice that the numbers for each of these thumbnails does correspond to that point on the map. So number four is here and they correspond. So if I click on the first here, Panema Bog Wildlife Sanctuary, um, you'll not only get a nice picture, um, but a full description. You'll get a description of that, of that location. We provide an information source and a photo credit as well. And so how to navigate to a different point once you're here. So you can either click on a different point on the map or you can use these arrows at the top. And so that will scroll through the different locations and you, you see that they'll highlight on the map as well. Um, there's also this little link at the bottom of the description which says more info. Uh, this doesn't actually lead you to more information about that site we couldn't change the wording on this, unfortunately, but it does provide directions to that location. So if you click that, it will bring you to Google Maps and it'll automatically put in that location and provide you with directions to that spot. I'm over here at work in Nashua, so it's sending me from Nashua to that little canoe port right there, which I thought would be a very useful feature you're interested in exploring some of these sites. So similarly, you could go check out the different cemeteries. Oh, Meadowview Cemetery, I'd love to go there. Click on that, it'll take you there. Sorry. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much how you navigate the app. You can move around the map, you can view all of these different tabs, scroll down this list, or explore it through the map. And as you move through the map, it will change the list on the left there. So the last thing that you can do with this app is you can share it and provide feedback. So to share, we have some buttons over in the top right here. If you click this, you'll get a short link, which you can share. Um, just copy and paste that into an email or on Facebook posts or whatever. You can also embed this app on another web page. The embed text is right here. If you want, you can change the size. Next, there's a link to share this via Twitter and via Facebook. And then lastly, we have a link right here, suggest a site or report a correction. If you click that, it'll send you to this web form. And on this form it has links to both the Heritage Commission and the Nashua Regional Planning Commission. You can provide your name, email address, and then either just leave general feedback, or you can even suggest a feature which you think should be included on this app. You know, uh, we don't promise that that feature will be included. You know, if for instance, somebody came on, they're like, oh, I want to suggest you know this rock the, which Horace you know Greeley once stood on you know we'd have to fact check that of course but you can select what type of feature it is a name for the feature you have to provide a specific location on the map an address and then you can even upload a photo for that so that's a easy way for us to 
learn more about you know how how people are experiencing the app and if there's some specific feedback they want to get. So that pretty much covers this app. I'll go back to the Heritage Commission website. So the last one is the Map Explorer tool or app, which I have open right here. Actually, let's click that one more time. Yeah, okay, so this is what you'll see upon opening this app. And um, so first I'll go through, so like the last app, I'll go through and show you how to navigate first. And next, the next step is I'll explain the legend, the layers, and the base map. And then third, I'll show you how to pull up pop-ups and then use the other various tools at your disposal in this app. I'll do my best to go slow. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can submit them on the Q&A form or you can, we'll have a um, question and answer period at the end of this presentation. So again, navigating this map is fairly easy. Clicking and dragging works best. Zooming in and zooming out, it's the same. You can use your scroll wheel to do that. Also, I want to mention that these apps are all usable on, um, on mobile devices as well. Um, they might not work quite as smoothly just because you have a smaller screen, but they do work. And uh, you know, for, so for navigating and zooming in, you just use your fingers. But you also have these buttons here at the bottom left at your disposal. Plus is zooming in, minus button zooms you out. Then we also have this button here. This is a location button. So if you click that, you'll get a prompt asking if you want to allow this website to access your location. If you say allow, then it'll zoom over to where you are and show you where you are with a little blue dot. That's not exactly where I am, but you know, it is close enough. Um, and as you can see, I'm not in Amherst. I'm over here in Nashua. So I'm just going to turn that off for now. But it can be helpful if you want to go out and about town, explore some of these sites, maybe walk some trails so you can uh, know where you are. All right, next to the location button is a little search bar right here. Um, so this search bar can be useful if you're looking for a specific feature or even if you want to look up an address. So for instance, if I typed in Panema, then what I would get are a few heritage site locations, a conserved lands location, and then some other addresses, some general things that come in. Um, so all of the heritage site uh, data is the exact same information that's in the previous app that we looked at. So you'll see that, you know, there was a general place name that we had in the previous map that, you know, was called Panema. So that's what this sends you to. Or for instance, oh, and now it's just showing you that. Or what if I wanted to look at Panema Bog Wildlife Sanctuary. If I click that, it will send me there. You could also type in one of the categories from the previous app, for instance, cemeteries. And the results of that list will be all of the different cemetery locations. So you think, oh, Popper Cemetery. What is that? Where is that? It'll take you right there. Or you could look up a specific address, for example, 250 Boston Post Road. I don't know who lives there, just as a disclaimer. This is just a random spot that I decided to use for an example. Um, and it'll take you there. But you could look at, you know, on any, any address. Um, 
and it will have, you know, it'll, it'll give you results for, for anywhere that you looked up, you know, it didn't have to, doesn't have to be in Amherst, but, you know, that's just a general search feature. So those are the main ways that you can navigate the map. And you'll notice next to the search bar, there are these three little dots. What those three dots is they minimize that navigation section of this bar. So if you're, you know, if you think that's taking up too space or it's distracting or you don't want to use the search bar, you can just click that. If you're missing it, you're like, oh, I do want to look something up or I want to know where my location is. All you have to do is click those three dots again to make it reappear. So that's the basics of navigating this map. So next I'm gonna talk about legend layers in the base map. So these correspond with three buttons. There's a button here, the legend, a button here for the layer layers, and a button here for the base map gallery. So in case uh, anyone needs an explanation of these terms, I'll go through that. So what is a legend? So the legend shows the user what kind of features are on the map and what they look like. So I'm gonna click this button right now and you can see that uh, these features are organized into groups called layers. And so the first layer that we have listed here is heritage sites. Shows you that each different kind of heritage site is shown as a different colored dot we have historic bridges, which are shown as this little blue bridge symbol. Trail parking, which come up as this little hiking figure. Public trails, which are these black lines. Locally designated scenic roads, roads subject to scenic setbacks, and the Amherst Village Historic District as this shaded polygon here. So that is pretty much it. Also, this little box here, you can move over to different spots of the map if you want. You can make it larger or smaller if you wish. I have it all the way down. If you want to see full legend, or if that's too much for you, you can make it a little smaller. Or you can even click these three little dots right here next to the X, and that will just minimize it and turn it into this little button. To close this legend, you just have to press this little X in the circle and it goes away. So next I'll talk about the layers. So as I mentioned before, the layers are how all the features on the map are organized. Each layer, contains a different grouping of features. These features can be points, lines, polygons, or even images. Each layer can be turned off or on, and each layer is symbolized differently, and which, as you saw, was on the legend. So in this map, all of the heritage sites are on the same layer. So here's the layer list here. Heritage sites are on the same layer. All of the public trails are on a different layer, and this just helps to keep the map organized and also allows the user to focus on the features that they are interested in. So to start with, I'm going to turn off all of the layers, and then I'll go through each of them and explain the different kinds of data that we have available on this app. So to do that, I'm going to click this little button here. It gives you four options. You can turn all the layers on, turn all the layers off, expand all the layers, which an example of that would be like this. It shows you the layers as they would appear on the, um, the legend or collapse all the layers. So to start with, I'm just going to turn them all off and then I'll go through each one at a time. So the first layer here we have is the Amherst Town Boundary. So this is NRPC's Town Boundary Line of Amherst. We keep this as up to date as possible. And yes, it doesn't quite match up with what you see on the base map, but ours is more accurate. The next is our heritage sites. So this is all of the same information that you saw in the Points of Interest app, the previous one. 
We have stone structures, cemeteries, old houses, signposts, um, places, all of the same information there. And uh, that information all came from um, the Amherst Heritage Commission and uh, some of our own um, added points as well. I'm gonna turn that off by pressing this little check mark. The next layer we have is historic bridges. So this actually is uh, hosted by the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. So this is public information about um, bridges and it has different kinds of attributes that are mostly you know, for technical reasons, but there are some interesting summaries of historical significance on here as well. The next layer is historic stone walls. So this data is hosted by the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. And this is part of the stone wall mapping project, which is, uh, has been a crowdsourced mapping initiative. And um, this actually is a very, very cool project. Um, and I believe, let's see. Yeah, if you hit those little three dots next to this layer or next to any of these layers, it will take you to, um, you know, kind of the back end description of these on ArcGIS Online, uh, which, you know, doesn't seem very user friendly to most people, but I thought I should mention that as well. Um, but back to the historic stone walls, this is a very cool project where um, through uh, volunteers, they've been able to map um, not just stone walls in New Hampshire, but stone walls throughout the state, um, both by uh, going out and ground sourcing this information and also using LIDAR data to find stone walls. Um, and I'll explain LIDAR, what LIDAR is later, because that is also some important data in our app here. Hey, uh, Terrell, before you leave, I, yeah. I see we have uh, Rick Corman in the audience who uh, just recently retired from New Hampshire DES, and he was really the big thrust behind, you know, uh, ground sourcing all of these uh, stone walls, not only in Amherst, but in greater uh, the state of New Hampshire. And I tell you, without Rick's uh, perseverance in this, it would have, uh, we would have been struggling through the years to get as much as, uh, uh, to get as much data in Amherst and New Hampshire as we did. So I just want to give due credit to, uh, to Rick. I know he's a participant and, uh, thanks for, uh, logging in tonight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Huge credit to Rick. I'm honored that he's even watching this presentation. So I, I hope you feel, uh, I hope you feel good that this is being, uh, all that information is being put to good use. Great. Um, so yeah, so that's the historic stone walls. Uh, the next layer that we have here is uh, trail parking. And uh, as I said before, that comes up as this little hiking figure. And that's, you know, parking locations for public trails. And those public trails are in another layer here. And they show up as this black line. And uh, the trail parking, as well as the public trails, that is data that NRPC hosts. That is information that we try to keep up to date across our entire region. And um, you know, every year we're going out and either mapping new trails that we haven't mapped before, or updating trails that we've mapped, you know, in the past but need updating, or um, going out and doing trails per the requests of the towns. So that's our data that we're putting up here. The next uh, two layers that we have are locally designated scenic roads and roads subject to scenic setback. And um, these are per, you know, the Amherst um, town ordinances, I guess. Will can give more information as to the difference between those two and how those overlap. Um, but that's uh, information that we um, generate for the town and show on the Amherst tax maps. After that, we have 
conserved lands. And again, this is information that NRPC maintains and updates on a regular basis. So all these green polygons are areas that are protected in one way or another. Um, next, we have a polygon of the Amherst Village Historic District, just to make that clear where that is. It is an important feature of the town and of the town's uh, heritage and culture. And the next layer I have on this list is the pine blister polygons. I'm gonna come back to that to give it a better explanation now, but I'm gonna skip ahead to these two layers, which are the LIDAR derived bare earth hill shades. Um, so what does that mean? I'm gonna turn it on first and I'll explain it. So basically these layers show you the ground surface of the earth using LIDAR and LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging. Uh, it is a type of remote sensing that generates precise three-dimensional information about the Earth's surface. So using LIDAR, you can go down and get some very nice detail about the surface of the terrain. Um, for instance, you can go over here, look at the Suhegan River and see all of the detail of the old oxbow lakes that were formed around here. Um, you can see roads, you can see some of the old stone walls, maybe even some building footprints. So that's really cool detailed information. And uh, this is as recent as last year, 2022. So this is really cool to be able to have and show. Um, we have two versions of this data. It's really the same thing. The difference is that um, one shows shadows as if the sun was in the northeast and one shows as if the sun was in the northwest. So you can see the difference here. Same stuff, just shaded slightly different. And so now I get to show you some of uh, my favorite things about this app. And these are some old maps, hand-drawn maps that we uh, were able, that I was able to geo-reference, um, which means to make accurate to, um, you know, the map in a, uh, the GIS data. So this first one we have is from 1858, and it is a map of Amherst that was created by Chase Smith Mason and Company. This actually is a, uh, a cut of a larger map of all of Hillsborough County. Um, but that was a lot of information. It was a very large detailed image. So for the purposes of this app and this project, I just sliced out Amherst. And so on this map, it's very cool. You can zoom in and it gives you, shows you different features, shows you where the railroad is, shows you where the schoolhouse is, shows you where different folks lived. Um, so it's very cool to be able to compare that with today's features and some of these other maps. The next one is from 1881. And this map shows the different school districts in Amherst from 1881. So even back then, they divided the town up and they had a schoolhouse for each section of the town. Turn that off, turn on the next one. This is a town map from 1892. You'll notice that it's a little wobbly and you know I wanna make the note that these were hand-drawn maps and you know they drew them and made them as accurate as they could back in the day and fitting them to you know the boundaries that we have and the roads that we have and the digital data that we have wasn't an easy task. So, you know, we did our best to make everything line up. But again, what's cool about this map is it shows you different locations, shows you where the train station was, schoolhouses, where different folks lived. And that was very useful for being able to locate a lot of the historic um, resources, especially um, the historic houses. Um, we could go back and look at some of the maps and be like, oh, okay, yes, that's where so-and-so lives on that map and on another map. Or, um, you know, you can see how it changed hands over the years. 
The next map we have is from 1906, and this is a USGS um, topographical map. And so this just focuses on the geography of the region. It has the uh, different lines for showing the different elevations, and it's less focused on the human features like train stations and homes. It does have some buildings in there, but it's more looking at the geography of the town. The next layer we have is from 1949. And this is a reference map that was uh, drawn up by Howard Locke. If you don't know, Howard Locke was a key figure in bringing electricity to the town of Amherst. Um, he, uh, his, you'll, you'll see scattered in all of the attribute information in our data, um, how his numbering system was used to identify different buildings that he helped bring electricity into. So you can see on this map, you know, he gave each of these points a number, one, two, three, you know, all, all across town. And so we still have some of those numbers in the attribute information. Uh, this next one is from 1953, and this is another USGS map. So you can see and compare the two, how things changed and updated and not only the geography, but even how they drew and, and made these maps um, from 1906 to 1953. Next one is from 1956, and this is a highway map. So this was a map they made for planning where Route 101 was going to go. We thought that'd be an interesting thing to add in. And then the last map here is from the 60s. And this is showing areas of the town which were uh, concern areas for white pine blister rust control. So this, that's a, um, you know, a tree disease that was affecting white pine in the area. And so they had different segments of the town. You can see the highlighted segments are where, you know, the major concern areas were in the town. And so now I will scroll up this list and go back to this layer, which I mentioned before, pine blister polygons. And if you turn that on, then it overlays. There we go. You can see the outline of those concern areas. And I wanted to include that in case somebody was interested in looking at, you know, maybe their neighborhood or a certain area of the town, you know, used to, you know, that used to be a concern area. So you can turn off the map and still have those polygons, those areas of concern and be like, oh yeah, they had that tree disease over there. I don't know, just in case anyone wanted to know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, all those, all those geo-reference maps, um, they came from uh, the Heritage Commission. Oh, except for the, the USGS maps, I found those from, from USGS and downloaded those myself. But the other ones, they came from the Heritage Commission. And so they provided us digital copies and I added those in. So that's all of the different layers that we have available at your disposal. And of course, there's this button here where you can turn them on, turn off all of the layers, turn them off, expand them, collapse them, but each one of them you can turn on one at a time, you know, so you can really focus on the stuff that you're interested in. Um, let's see, is that all? Yes, okay, so that's all I wanted to say about the layers. So we're done there. The next button here is the base map gallery. So what is the base map? So we talked a lot about the layers, the, the different features and data that we have available. The base map is more just a reference map that lies underneath all of the layers. So while you can't turn on aspects of the base map here, I can't turn off, you know, Eagle Rock or the wetlands or, you know, the roads or anything, you can change the reference map. You can change the base map. So if you click this button, the gallery will appear in the left here. And you can select any of these to be the base map, which you can then you know, show the layers on top of. So for instance, I could change it to this light gray canvas. 
and you'll lose some of the details, but maybe you prefer that because it'll help certain features show up more clearly, like the public trails and the stone walls and stuff. I don't know. Or you can change the base map to, you know, be more familiar. Let's see this one here, navigation. That looks very much like Google Maps style. So, you know, you want to stick with what's familiar to you. You can do that. There's also satellite imagery on here. So you can get a really clear idea of what the town looks like from the sky. Or maybe you're interested more in the physical geography of the area. You can click, click this uh, topographic map. So that's the base map. So the base map is just, you know, serves that purpose of being, you know, the bottom, you know, reference layer on which you can show the other, um, you know, the other features and layers. So just to review, I know that was a lot. Uh, we looked at the legend and well, of course, we don't have any active layers right now. But let's say I wanted to look at trail parking and bridges and conserved lands. So we learned about the legend, which shows you how the different features on the map are symbolized, what they look like. We know how to go on the layer list and turn on and off layers. So let's see public trails on there as well. And we looked at the base map. And uh, we know how to change the base map that sits below all of the layers. So the next thing, the next section that I want to show you is, you know, how do we interact with these features? And um, how do we use a couple other tools at our disposal here? Um, so to do that, I want to zoom into this area just as an example. So uh, just like the last app that we had, the points of interest, we can look at all these different heritage sites. We can click on them, give the name, give what category it's in, and give some other attribute information like approximate year built, approximate based on you know our best efforts, a description of this location, where this information is sourced. Um, it provides that Howard lock number that I mentioned before, as well as a number that corresponds to a survey document done by the Heritage Commission. Um, it has a get directions button. So again, you can find your way to that very easily on Google Maps. And then it provides that same thumbnail that was in the previous app. And you can click on the thumbnail and it'll even give you a fuller image if you really want it. So that's one way you can look at these features. You can click on some other layers, like you can click on these trails. These are all public trails in Amherst, and it'll tell you the name of this trail, the name of the system that it's in, what kind of condition it is, um, you know, what's allowed on this trail, if the trail has specific markings to follow. Uh, as well as the trail parking. You can click on that. It says Stearns Road parking area, and you can click that to get directions to the trail parking. Um, let's see. Yep, I mentioned that. Okay. Um, yeah, not all of the features are clickable, but uh, many of them are, especially the, uh, the point features. Next, I wanted to show you this really cool tool right here. This is the swipe tool. Um, the swipe tool allows you to compare and view the different geo-reference maps that I mentioned before. So first I'm going to go on the layer list here, click that button, and I'm going to pull up the 1858 map. So now we can see those layers on top of this map. Um, you know, to the best that we were able to geo-reference this. And if I hit the swipe button, 
then we can move this back and forth and see a comparison of the map with you know, our modern uh, mapping, our modern base map here. Now you can also compare, and when you're done with the swipe tool, when you're done doing this, and you can move the map, you can zoom in and out. If you wanna look at the whole town. When you're done with this tool, all you have to do is click these three little dots right here. When you do that, the swipe feature will end and the map remains. Uh, you can use this to compare two of the different maps. So I'll go back to the layer list. And so I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to turn off this 1858 map. And I want to look at the differences between this 1906 USGS map and this 1953 USGS map. So I've turned both of them on, but as you can see, only one of them shows up right now. And that's because this one is sitting on top of this one. So we can't see the 1953 map at all because this map's on top of it. What we can do is click the swipe button. And now it's like we're kind of like turning the page. We're folding this one over to compare it with the one underneath it. So, you know, what's really neat is 1906, here's the Suhegan River. We pull it back and like, oh, they added a lot more detail in here in the 1953 map about the little oxbow lakes. And you can see how the roads changed a little bit. And you can see that this is now state forest. So it yeah, provides some really interesting historical insight. So I'm gonna turn that off now, click this little button. I'm gonna turn off both of these maps and close the layer list. Um, so that covers the swipe tool. The next tool we have here is measurement. So you click that little box opens up and the measurement tool is cool because it allows you to measure either area, distance, or just find the coordinates of a specific location. Um, so for instance, I could click area and once I start clicking on the map, it will begin to draw a polygon. So let's say I wanted to know the approximate area of Panema Bog Wildlife Sanctuary. I'll just click around the border here. I'll even get rid of that little bit. And then when you're done with your polygon, you will double click and it'll tell you up here, that's about 82.4 acres. Great. So I know the, the larger area of that, but what if I wanted to know, if I went and I wanted to walk this little loop here, how far is that? So you can click the distance button here and you can also change uh, how it measures this. You can change it to miles, kilometers, feet, meters, et cetera. Same with area, you can change that from acres, square miles, all the way down to square feet and meters. But if I wanted to walk this little section here, how far would that be? So start here and I can click all along this path. And double click when I'm done. And that says that is 0.52 miles. So now I know if I wanted to go there, I could walk 0.52 miles there. Or if I wanted to know, you know, the distance from, this is approximately where the middle school is, right? How far is the middle school from the homestead, which is right there. So kids getting out of school, they're walking down cross road, turn down here, get to the homestead. That's about half a mile too. And then, location. So this will show the location of the cursor once it leaves this little box. And then I can click and it'll tell me the exact coordinates of that little marker that it'll leave right there. For anyone who likes to get really specific with their coordinates. And that is the measurement tool.
Last thing I wanted to talk about is this button, share tool. So like the previous map, we want you to be able to share this with your friends and your grandkids or whoever. So if you open up the share tool, there's a little link that you can copy and paste. It also has buttons to send it in an email, share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter. And if anyone uses Google Plus, you can do that too. Um, and you can even embed this in a website. So all you have to do is copy this text and embed that where you want. And the very final thing that I wanted to do is if there was a specific location that you wanted to you know, share with this map. So for instance, let's go back to that tavern here, the David Danforth Tavern. If that was like, oh, that's really neat. I want to tell my cousin about it. You can click these three little dots here at the bottom of the pop-up, click add a marker. And now we have a little marker on the map. If you click then on the marker, it'll give you the coordinates of that location and then even a URL. If you copy this and then paste it into a new tab, it'll open up this app and take you, should take you right to that marker. So if there was a very specific feature you wanted somebody to know about, that's how you could easily share that with them. All right, well, I hope that I have gone slow and steady and not overwhelmed anybody, but um, those are all of the main features of this app. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you've learned something. I hope this has inspired you to learn more about Amherst. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Well, thank you very much, Tyrell. I uh, hope uh, um, everyone agrees with me that your work is really exciting, uh, particularly those, those georeference maps. I mean, anyone who sort of was resourceful before and knew what they were looking for might be able to get their hands on an e-copy of those maps, but to have them georeferenced um, and living alongside other GIS information as overlays, it's uh, really exciting to be able to then, you know, start to make some geographic inferences because they're in that format. So. Um, we've come a long way since uh, these ladies here in front of what this picture is the uh, Colossus code breaking machine that filled a room um, in the 40s. So um, yeah, it's very exciting. So what's next? Um, I want to you know invite anyone at this moment, um, if you have uh, anything on your mind or a question about anything you've seen, um, go ahead, you can put your question in the Q&A box. We have plenty of time to field questions, um, so, don't, so don't be shy. Um, I would say that the applications have kind of gone through a bit of a soft launch at this point. We presented them for the first time publicly at the December Amherst, New Hampshire Heritage Commission meeting. Um, and I just want to point out that, um, you know, we need to get as many eyes on these as, as possible. Um, as GIS people, we're very used to mapping existing conditions and um, that's hard enough, and that, but that's, that, those are features that you can actually go out and, and observe in the world. Um, you know, historic information is, is just that much more challenging. And, uh, you know, I, I want to just take a moment to acknowledge, um, again, the efforts of those who came before us in compiling so much of this information. Um, you know, the town of Amherst has done an extraordinary job um, compiling records, preserving their records, and um, the efforts of historians in town, particularly I want to mention Katrina Holman, um, who has given us um, quite a bit of fact-checking um, feedback, and we're currently working through that. Um, and uh, you know, it it really does. We do rely on on those experts to help us, um, you know, point out where we've got it right, where we've got it wrong, where we've got omissions. Um, so we're working through that um, right now um, as we speak. Um, the other thing that's come up as a um, consistent point of feedback is that. This information really is site specific um, and um, you know the ability to integrate or otherwise discover um, specific property information parcels what, what I mean by parcels um, with address and potentially owner um, right now NRPC has a pretty rich repository of of that information um, it's sitting in an application that we call map geo property viewer um, and so we're going to be working to integrate that information 
so that we don't have to host it in two different places. So basically we would tie the two applications together and so that they kind of um, inform each other. So it's a technical task that we've got on the work plan for the spring. Um, the other thing we're looking at is, um, a, I guess I call it a quick start user guide, um, which would basically echo many of the points that Tyrell Rel made tonight, um, how to get started with these, how to get going quickly, um, as well as some documentation about the data sources um, so that people can actually refer to them in their initial form um, and go back to those resources as well. Uh, many of which are already available on the new AmherstHeritage.com website. So I think it's you know worthy to mention that again. Um, you know, as as the products evolve, um, they will be reflected there. It's the sort of the one-stop shop for this information. Um, so go back, go often, and see the results of our work. I uh, want to just um, invite anyone at this point to um, take a note of our contact information here. Um, Will, Tyrell, or myself, we can be reached best probably by email. So here's our email contact uh, information. Um, I also want to just point out again, this is the feedback form, short URL, this is the short address to get to um, if you're so inclined to, you know, really get detailed on the amount of uh, information that, you know, you know and want to transmit to us. The best bet is really to use that feedback form. Um, it standardizes the information and makes it much more easy to digest into GIS. And those forms go right to Tyrell's email inbox. So you don't have to worry about them, you know, getting lost or, you know, misplaced along the way. Um, you know, he'll get those right as they come in. So it's a more efficient way of getting feedback to us, particularly on specific sites that you know about. And if you have a picture, that would be the best way to get it to us as well. Um, I see here we've got a couple of items in the Q&A. So um, with that, I'd like to invite both Will and Tyrell, if you could unmute yourselves again, we might as well you know, just answer these live. Um, there's not too many, so, so we're able to do that. Um, Amy mentions, you know, good job, you've exceeded our expectations and created a model for the community's well done. Well, thank you, Amy, that's, that's very nice feedback. Great, great to hear. John asks, GIS apps, ArcGIS apps are rather expensive. I authored and pay for a few for the ACC, the Amherst Conservation Commission um, that are resident on the ACC website. How are the Heritage Com apps paid for over the years? Very good question. Um, I'll take that, John. Um, the um, software that we use to manage the data um, is, is by far the most expensive piece um, because we are using ArcGIS Desktop, ArcGIS Pro um, to automate and otherwise manage uh, the data. As an ArcGIS Online organization, NRPC has access to a whole bevy of templates that we can use to author applications. Um, and that is, you know, kind of embedded in our subscription um, that we have to ArcGIS Online that comes with our desktop. Um, it's sort of a convoluted licensing model. So however, the ongoing cost at this point beyond the development of these apps really is about the, um, the hosting fees. And that's all based on, um, you know, the footprint of the files. So we've been very conscious as we go to make sure that we're not putting in the cloud um, data that we've decided we don't think is important anymore. Um, you know, Tyrell mentioned that he clipped down a countywide map. Um, raster information in particular takes up a lot of space, relatively speaking. And um, so let's not host information that, you know, is not going to necessarily get looked at. So, um, you know, over time, NRPC is absorbing um, the cost of that hosting. However, if it gets to the point where the database grows to the point where we need to re-strategize, um, that's definitely possible to do. The town of Amherst itself actually is an ArcGIS Online organization. And so it might get to the point where we essentially turn over ownership of these apps to the town and that they live under the town's ArcGIS Online organization. Um, you can do that just making a copy through ArcGIS Online Assistant. And um, I think ultimately that will probably be where we're at 
Um, we certainly don't want to turn over anything to, until it's um, clear who's going to then take care of it. <laughs> um, and our PC, you know, we, we take pride and ownership of, of these um, and, and want to make sure that they live on um, and don't get abandoned. So um, definitely, though, we go into these projects with that, with that in mind. Um, the ACC, I know, has a number of um, apps that are um, you know, been developed with over time by different people and storage strategies might not be uniform. And um, that's something that NRPC is going to be looking at with the town in the new year um, under a separate um, contract. So John, I don't know if you knew that, but um, that's a relatively recent development. Um, we'll be working with community development to kind of do some housekeeping, make sure, and, um, you know, with staff turnover that all the investment that the town has made, um, including that from the ACC um, is um, handled in an appropriate and well-managed way. So I hope that is a long-winded answer to your question, <laughs> sufficient <laughs> long-winded answer. I'm waiting for anyone else. If uh, we still have plenty of time, we have till eight o'clock. Um, doesn't mean we have to stay till eight by any means. But if uh, anyone would like to pose a question now at the time. Well, uh, I think we um, have gotten to the end of the question list. Um, again, I want to just thank everyone for your time and attention. And uh, again, encourage you to get in touch with any of us um, for any kind of follow up thoughts or questions or concerns. Uh, there's one more thing I'd like to say, Sarah. Absolutely. And so I just want to remind everyone that this has been recorded and um, it will be available to watch. Um, we'll figure out how to get it on, get a link on the um, either the Heritage Commission website or, you know, even available possibly as a link on one of the apps themselves um, so that for everyone who wasn't here today, they'll be able to watch and, and learn at a different date. Yep. Hey, Sarah, this is uh, Will. Um, hey, thanks for your presentation tonight. I, I tell you, every time Terrell goes through this, I pick something up that is new. And, and that area uh, measurement, I, I didn't know that that was available. So that's a really a pretty cool thing uh, that you showed tonight. But uh, well done to both you two. You know, if I had to give you a grade, it would be an A plus, and uh, you guys are really on it. And uh, I appreciate all the work you did for Amherst and the Heritage Commission. So, uh, so well done to both of you. You bet, Will. It was fun. thank you, Will. Glad to keep going. So. Yep. Well, all right, everyone. Well, we will be signing off and uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Stay safe and warm out there. Yeah, I guess we're supposed to get some snow tomorrow. <laughs> some More snow. snow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very yeah, good. So, okay, everybody. Thanks again. All right. Bye-bye.